everybody. Welcome to the What Is Money Show. I am thrilled to have you here joining me on my mission to help shine light on the corruption of money. Now, a little bit about this show and how it makes money. We are 100% sponsor based, which means that all the revenues we derive come from sponsorships. But I try to be very selective about the sponsors that I work with, specifically trying to choose those who have values well aligned to the values expressed on the show, like freedom, education, self-sovereignty, etc. So what I'm going to do is a few ad reads right here at the top of the show and then a few ad, ad reads in the middle. And I hope you won't skip them. I hope you'll take the time, listen and see what they have to offer, because again, these are hand selected sponsors. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Swan Private. Swan Private is a concierge financial services firm based in Los Angeles. Now, I've known the Swan team for years, and these guys are laser focused on the Bitcoin mission. They even have a zero tolerance policy for all shitcoining. Recently, their CEO, Corey Clipston, was instrumental in calling out many of these crypto scams right before they collapsed, saving a lot of people a lot of money in the process. Swan Private focuses on guiding high net worth individuals and businesses on all aspects of Bitcoin strategy, including buying, custodying, and market research. This concierge service provides you direct access to a private advisor by text, phone, or email. So go to swanprivate.com slash breedlove today to sign up. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Ledin. Ledin lets you do more with your digital assets. For instance, Ledin offers a B2X loan product that lets you leverage your existing Bitcoin to buy even more Bitcoin. Or you can also get traditional Bitcoin collateralized US dollar loans through Ledin as well. Ledin also offers both Bitcoin and USDC denominated savings accounts, letting you generate yield on your digital assets. Recently, Ledin has launched a Bitcoin mortgage product as well that lets you use Bitcoin to buy a home or finance one that you already own. So go to Ledin.io, that's L-E-D-N.io today to sign up. Kevin Sorbo, welcome to the What Is Money Show. Good to be here, sir. I've been uh, following your podcast. You do great work. Thank you for what you're doing. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've been following your work a lot longer than you've been following mine, probably. Uh, because I'm, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big fan of the Hercules show growing up. Um, and you're probably the age I was when I filmed it. I shot it for seven years in my 30s. So Yeah, yeah, mid-30s <laughs> now. So yeah, it's... Um, no, that's what yeah, I was doing. <laughs> it's cool to talk to you. I really just, you know, the top here, I have to say, I appreciate all of the signal you've been putting out mm -hmm. on your Twitter page calling out the bullshit, calling out the lies, the deception. Um, I think we just need more people standing up and speaking the truth as we see it, right? To hopefully recover from this this mass psychosis that um, we seem to be embroiled in oh, <laughs> it's, nationwide. It's crazy. You know, I mean, Facebook took me down about a year and a half ago for posting the truth because, you know, Zuckerberg and his little minion trolls, they don't like the truth. The facts or statistics, it drives them crazy. They love living in a lie. And so they banned me. But Twitter, thank God, is, has not taken me down yet. I get, you know, I get the haters out there every time I toast post. But obviously, the majority of people love what I'm saying. I don't know if you saw one of my latest ones. I said, Fetter, because Fetterman getting elected, you got to be kidding me. But anyway, I said Fetterman and Biden for 2024 because it's a no brainer. So I think we got a lot of hits when I posted that one. Yeah. So you've been posting a lot about that recently, this uh, idea of, I guess, voter fraud or or fraudulent sure. counting. Could, I mean, could you just elaborate on what what's going on? We seem to have this sacred notion of democracy in this country, but I mean, I have my own views on it, but clearly the the voting and counting mechanism is not working correctly. So what what are you trying to throw light on there? Well, it's crazy. We got, you know what, it's it's so obvious and blatant. Voter fraud, I think, has been around forever. I mean, I read articles about voter fraud back in 1960 when Nixon was defeated very narrowly by by John F. Kennedy. But the last 10 years, the, the party on the left, the Democrats, are it's blatant about it. And why did 2020 and 2022 have the same problems in the same states that we had problems in when when during Trump, you know, hopefully Trump got reelected? So uh, I live here in Florida, which is what, seven times the population of Arizona. We knew in one day who, who had won the governor here in DeSantis. They're still fighting about it in, in Arizona. I mean, this whole idea of mail-in voting is absolutely ridiculous. And the Democrat Party is the last party who wants to get rid of it. 
That, that, that's just stupid. It's so easy to cheat. They have mail-in voting. So we need to get rid of that. People need to go on the day, one day to vote, one day. You show in on election day, make it a holiday. You go and show your ID. There's nothing racist about showing an ID. I mean, you got the Democrat Party telling the African-Americans that they're too stupid to be able to get an ID. So the African-Americans should be appalled by that and angry about, and angered by that. There was a guy that did a documentary about, I think it came out about a year and a half ago. He went into the Bronx and he interviewed hundreds of African-Americans and they all just laughed. And of course I have an ID. Why do you think we can't get an ID? So the idea that the Democrat party wants to say that that's a racist thing to ask for an ID. So that, does that mean that African-Americans when they travel don't have to show an ID to get an airplane, but the rest of us do? I mean, it's just, it's so absurd. It's just ridiculous. Wow, it's amazing that these th that people can get away saying these ridiculous things yeah. these days. Um, okay, so your again, your Twitter page is absolute fire. Um, I don't know if this is your most popular tweet, but this is your pinned tweet that uh, let me make sure I have this right. The media hates Kanye and Elon Musk more than they ever hated Epstein or Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> and that has about two hundred thousand likes. What? Um, you know, I, I guess maybe you and I have the same thing that we feel like we just really need to um, call out the bullshit that we see and you do a really good job of it. So what is it about what's in that? Can you just unpack that tweet for us? Elaborate what that means for well, people that may not know who those individuals it got are. So many hits right away that we decided to move it up there to the top. You know, I, I obviously I talk about my wife with these things. I say, can I say this without having the world explode? And uh, it, and it just once again shows how the left, the Democrat Party, picks and chooses what they want to go after and what they, who they want to attack. And it's so obvious that if, if half the stuff, if you look at, I look at Trump's children, they spent four years trying to look for stuff on them. Look at all the stuff we got on Joe Biden's son and nothing happens to him. If you flip that party and if Biden was a conservative and that was his conservative son, 90% of the media would just go crazy on that. But here, here they defend it and protect it and just keep quiet about it when the when the when the the guilt is so obvious and right in front of our faces. So I I uh, my my job, I think, is really to pose out the you know to show and and um expose the hypocrisy of the left because it's so crazy. But the reality is they don't care if they lie. They don't care if they're hypocrites. They just don't care anymore. And because they know they're protected by the mainstream media. So I, I'm I'm actually sort of surprised there hasn't been one liberal reporter out of the thousands in this country, tens, hundreds of thousands in this country, that doesn't finally say enough is enough, guys. This is crazy what we're doing to the country. I love the fact that Bill Maher, he'll always be a liberal, fine. I used to do a show Politically Incorrect. I was probably on it three or four times before his latest show here on HBO. But you, you've probably seen the stuff he's been saying, too. He's saying common sense stuff. It has nothing to do with being a conservative or being a liberal. It has to do with the reality of the insanity of what's going on in the world right now. And he's he's exposing it. And I, I appreciate he's doing that. Yeah, agreed. I try to always transcend the, the left-right divide. It's really hard to do, though, because we're all embroiled in it. But it seems like this the state is the problem right that's the the institution mm -hmm. that's stealing from people a lot of the, the stolen proceeds are used to fund wokeism and critical race theory and all this nonsense yeah. so um you got another one here that's that's really good you tweeted people don't trust the government because a billionaire child trafficking ring was exposed and we still don't have the names of who participated yeah I mean, this seems to be the real thing, right? Like people are universally upset about this, yet uh, mainstream media and the mainstream media is silent on it, right? It doesn't even, doesn't even acknowledge it. So what can we do? Like, what can we do to try to throw off the yoke of the state that's stealing from us and apparently engaging in extremely immoral acts like this child trafficking ring? Well, I think our forefathers are flipping in their graves. I mean, the whole idea of the Constitution was the government was supposed to be uh, controlled by the people. It was it's mm -hmm. we the people. They don't even teach civics in school anymore. All they teach in school is how to be woke, that you can change your change your gender if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, white people are bad. I mean, all this negative stuff. We need number one, get rid of public education. Yeah. But I think one of the blessings of COVID, we're homeschooled. My wife's a homeschool advocate. She travels the country. You homeschool all three of her kids, and. Uh, the one bus in COVID is that 2 million more kids are now being homeschooled because people finally are waking up to the reality that public schools 
aren't really the best place to keep their kids in and use it as a babysitting service because it's crazy what they're doing to children right now. But uh, I just think that uh, we have to keep exposing the, the craziness of wokeism, the craziness of cancel culture, because they've certainly come after me. I've lost jobs off speaking events because, you know, maybe 10 people, will, maybe 2000 people want me to come speak. But 10 people said, oh, if he shows up, we're going to riot. Well, then let him riot. Let him show mm -hmm. up. We never do most, most of the time anyway. But uh, we let the smallest percentage have the biggest voice in our country right now. And it's not good for our country at all. And people need to wake up and realize it's we, the people. The government is, gets bigger and bigger. And the whole idea of our forefathers was to create a government that we actually, the Revolutionary War was because of what Brit, the British government was doing to the people living in America. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're doing the same thing. Our government is doing exactly what the British government was doing. And mm -hmm. uh, people need to fight back and say enough is enough of this. But there's too many sheep out there. We need to wake up the lions. The sheep are going to be sheep. They love the government. God is their government. And, you know, let them, you know, take care of me cradle to grave because, you know, maybe their lives didn't turn out the way they wanted to. So they got to blame somebody. They got to blame God. They got to blame a God they don't believe in. They got to blame, fa blame family, friends, you mm -hmm. for being a white guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, want, they want our tax dollars to take care of them. Um, you know, I'm all for paying taxes for people who really need help. But you know, let's face mm. it, there's a vast majority of people out there just taking advantage of the system. And that's got to end. For sure. Yeah. So the it seems to me like fiat currency is clearly the mechanism that lets government keep getting bigger unchecked. Mm. Right. When you can just you know this somewhat obvious if you consider that every business in the world must be profitable to survive except government. Right. Government can just print yeah. money to paper over their losses. Yeah. So. Uh, you said you you support taxation for what's needed, but I and correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you had tweeted before that taxation is theft as well, which is a, a view that I hold as well. Sure. And I I find it difficult to have a rational conversation around that. There's a lot of people that get really emotional when you bring up taxation being theft. So um, I'd love to just hear your views on that. Like, what role you think kind of fiat currency and or taxation plays in the overgrowth of government? Well, you know, we never had taxes prior to World War One. World War One, they said, we said, well, tax you, it's going to be short term. Don't worry about it. Well, then, you know, mm -hmm. once they got their hands into that, um, you know, once you give the government any power, they don't want to give it up. So um, they started taxing everything. You think, think how your money is taxed. You pay a federal tax, you pay a state tax. And then they add another thing. So the money you've already been taxed by, you double. So you've already lost half. You got to work six, seven months out of the year just to pay your taxes. The government is very kind to let you keep the other five months. But then that money that's already been taxed, you got to pay a, a sales tax. When you buy anything, you got to pay a gas tax. You got to pay. Uh, you own your property, but not really. They they tax your property. There's this, there's a property tax every year. It's amazing to me how all these people get in the government and they think, oh gosh, okay, now I'm a senator. What should I do? Okay, I need to come up with a way to steal more money from the from the general uh, population. And that's all I do. I tell politicians all the time, getting rid of taxes is still doing something. You and I and everybody else knows how to spend their money better than the government does. And I guarantee you that we would still give and help people out that needed help. We're far more generous with our money than the government is. And you're right. The government produces nothing. They produce nothing. I mean, uh, Ronald Reagan, one of his many great quotes was, uh, he says, these are the greatest words to fear. Hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. They're not there to help. They're there they're to make your lives more miserable and control. And that's all they want to do. They love their power. and They're not going to give up their power. And we're giving them more and more power all the time. And now, now they're going on freedom of speech. We're losing freedom of speech left and right. They're going after the Second Amendment. I know you're a Second Amendment guy. I certainly am. I mean, we're loaded for bear in my house. Trust me. My kids and I go to the range every every week to shoot. Um, so, And they're all legal guns, guys. So yeah. they, got, they got to realize that they want to take away the guns. The bad guys aren't going to give up their guns, people. They, they right. just aren't. So yeah. to sit there and think that we need stricter gun laws uh, just goes against the reality of what's going to happen if we actually did that. Yeah, 100%. I'm glad you brought up the, the theft of time, right? That you work six months to pay for the government and you keep the other yeah. six months because that's ultimately what I... I often describe it as, as as time theft, right? Inflation, sure. taxation being the theft of time. And you're you're right too that that's the same theft which energized the foundation of the United States, right? It was this taxation without representation. Without representation. And that's exactly what we have again here exactly with fiat currency. Now. Here's the thing. If people are able to keep more of their money, what happens? 
hey, I want to get a bigger house. What happens with that? Well, all of a sudden, guys that make windows have more work. Guys that do roofing have more work. Guys that, you know, put in the plumbing. Make, it creates more jobs. And every time a Democrat gets in office, look what happens. You know, if Trump uh, was still in office, do you think we'd have five dollar gasoline? No, it'd be a buck eighty right now. There'd be no, there would have been no withdrawal the way that Biden did it. They killed more of our servicemen, and we left eighty billion dollars of taxpayers. Uh, tanks and guns and weapons over there to give the Taliban as a gift. And I just read that Biden gave $1.1 billion to the Taliban. Why? Mm. Why do we keep funding our enemies to fight against us? It's, I think a lot of people that just keep voting the same way are ignorant to the reality of what's going on in terms of politics. They just think that they got to vote this way or that way. How bad does it have to get? I mean, really, how horrible does it have to get if you look at the last few years for people to finally on the left go, you know, maybe I shouldn't vote for the same person. Maybe I should vote for the conservative this time because it hasn't been working this way. So thank God for guys like Kanye West or Charles Barkley, um, Shaq coming out. These guys are coming out because, um, you know, the black population ain't going to listen to me, but they might listen to those guys. And they say, we've been voting for the same people for 60 years. Has our education gotten better? No, it's gotten worse. Has our has our our, our income levels gotten better? Our lifestyles gotten better? No, they haven't. So maybe they need to wake up and start voting for other people to make their lives better. And we need to get rid of the rhinos too, because the rhinos don't help us any way whatsoever. I think there's a lot of fake, fake conservatives on the conservative party as well. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, CrowdHealth. CrowdHealth is a Bitcoin-enabled alternative to legacy health insurance. Now let's face it, legacy health insurance is an absolute scam. Nobody can explain this better than the legendary comedian Chris Rock. Insurance. You got to have some insurance. You got to. There's an insurance. They shouldn't even call it insurance. They should just call it in case shit. <laughs> and I give a company some money in case shit happens. Now, if shit don't happen, shouldn't I get my money back? <laughs> so with CrowdHealth, instead of just paying premiums that you'll never see again, you can hold part of this pool of savings in dollars and in Bitcoin through CrowdHealth. And when you have a health event, you can draw against this pool of communal savings. So go to joincrowdhealth.com slash breedlove to learn more or sign up. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Wasabi Wallet. Wasabi lets you use Bitcoin privately while still maintaining full control over your money. Specifically, Wasabi Wallet is an open source, non-custodial wallet with privacy built in by default. By using Wasabi, you're effectively putting the private back in private property. Wasabi Wallet is an easy to use privacy wallet that can support any amount of Bitcoin transactions. So go to wasabiwallet.io today to download the state-of-the-art wallet software. Now I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks gives you access to the fine art market at more affordable price points. They do this by offering you fractional shares in their $500 million portfolio of fine art. Now fine art is an alternative asset class and historically it's been a great performer and a really good hedge against inflation most investors typically hold anywhere from two to ten percent of their assets in an asset like fine art to sign up or learn more go to masterworks.com and use promo code breedlove now i'd like to tell you about our sponsor casa casa makes it simple to buy and secure your bitcoin without wondering whether you're doing it right Specifically, Casa provides a multi-key custody solution, which is by far the most secure way to custody your Bitcoin. Now, when I talk about Bitcoin being theft-proof money or inviolable private property, a multi-key custody model is exactly what I am talking about. Using multiple keys lets you maintain full control of your Bitcoin while also giving you redundancy in case you lose one of the keys. It's also the best way to secure your Bitcoin for inheritance planning purposes. So go to keys.casa, that's C-A-S-A, -A, today to sign up and use discount code BREEDLOVE. Do you think that, so you think, I guess you still have faith in democracy working in the long run for this country. I do. You I do. do. I, I, think that, uh, I, I think that if you actually had democracy, and so mm -hmm. I mean, we are now a socialist country. We're heading down the wrong road. Mm -hmm. I think it was, uh, I don't know, it was Brezhnev, or which which president of communist Russia said 
Um, we don't have to attack America. America will attack itself. Something mm. like that. He's mm-hmm. just basically saying we will we will swallow our own tail one day. And uh, we're starting to do that now. And you can see it happening everywhere. And the voting system is is the top of that. As long as um, we keep voting with in you know mail in voting, it's just going to be an easy road to uh, manipulate. And we need to stop that. Do you think that there's a, a path to eliminating the central bank? through democracy because that's the one like i would like to believe in democracy as an effective governance uh mode but then when i see the existence of the central bank it kind of just defeats the whole purpose of voting because they just keep printing money and funding all the bullshit so do you think that was one of my tweets i I said why do we have to pay taxes you guys just keep printing money why don't you (laughs) pay the taxes because it's once again you just kind of you think about that i just laughed when i posted that i said this is perfect because they just keep printing money like that's not going to have an effect on what's going on in the inflation. Of course it is. Right. I mean, it's the you know, basic general rules of economics that we're just letting, um, you know, our governments make lives worse for all of us. And you look what's going on now. I've heard um, diesel fuel is running really low. That means truckers won't be able to deliver things because they're not going to be able to afford that. And it's not going to be worth it for them. So what's that going to do? You're going to have less things on the shelves. You know, I mean, look at the higher prices we've seen in the last two yeah. years on just going to the grocery store. And uh, we're making it more and more difficult for people. And what does that do? That increases violence. That increases crime. That increases mm-hmm. hate. That increases anger and frustration. And, uh, you know, it's it to me, it's all being done on purpose. They know exactly what they're doing because all they care about is power for themselves. It's like if you look at the government of, of China, it's a capitalist government. They like making trillions of dollars, but they mm-hmm. rule people with a communist hand. Yeah. So it's starting to happen. The same thing in our country right now. That's a good way to look at it, actually, because it's always ultimately capitalist and that it's sure. about the money and the wealth and the power. But the the class that's being ruled, they're typically sold a lie, right? Like, oh, we're, you know, power to the people or whatever it is. But in reality, they're being they're being uh, they're having tribute extracted from them all the time. Well, look at my industry, Hollywood. Hollywood puts out. Look at the look at the agenda they have going out there. And they can sit there and say, we are pro-socialism. We're pro, you know, for the little man. You know, no, they're not. They still want to make big money. They're still a capitalist business. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Disney and, and, and Paramount and Universal, they all still want to make a lot of money. And I don't mm-hmm. begrudge them that because mm-hmm. that's what made America powerful. It was the individuals. It was p- the individual businesses that made America great. It wasn't mm-hmm. big government. It mm-hmm. was people that went out there like the Rockefellers and the, you know, the people that really applied themselves, get out there and people get all mad about that. And I go, look, in the capitalist system, yeah, there are some people that do a lot better than other people, but everybody can still do better. There will still always be somebody making more money than you are. I mean, I shot a movie, uh, I shot a couple movies in Eastern Europe, and I talked to the people that grew up in communism under the Russian rule. And it, it strips them of self-esteem, hope, mm-hmm. drive, ambition. It just takes away everything and makes people all the same. They're all just bland and there's no right. motivation to them. When that wall came down in 1989, um, it really, the, the the hope for all those countries in the Eastern Bloc were the youth, were the people that were coming up. Because mm-hmm. I remember, I lived over there for three and a half years when East Germany was still around. And I remember meeting some East Germans that escaped that 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 horrible, you know, government. Mm-hmm. And they just said that, you know what, we, we get bits and pieces of what's going in the Western world. And we see that we're going wow, we can see it so much better over there. Because let's face it, if communism is so great, why did, they, why did the Russians build that wall and have barbed wire on their side of the fence mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. stop people from leaving? Nobody takes boats from Key West to Cuba. Have you noticed that? Right. Nobody's <laughs> rushing to the Mexican border to move into Mexico. And there are reasons for that. If yeah. they honestly believe, that I just, in this last voting, 18 to 30 year olds, 60, 64 percent believe communism is a good thing. Then wow. I think all those people that believe that need to go move to North Korea, Venezuela, Cuba, even Russia. Go there yeah. and let me after a year, let me know if, you know, since that's already so ingrained in that economy, in that world. Um, let me know if you still think that communism is a good, a good idea. I think they would wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Great point there. And really, that's the, the idea of making money. I think to your point, shouldn't be demonized. Right. Everyone yeah. should want to make money and create wealth and you know innovate. This is not a bad thing. The bad thing is when you steal from other people, right? It's yeah. good. It's good to create value in the world. Yeah. Um, What's the American yeah. dream, right? We're getting yes. rid of the yes. American dream, and that the whole idea was to become successful. Now, if you were, look, I've got I've got a very dear friend. Um, he's originally from South Central. He's he's black. 
became very successful in the business world. He, he, he knew the world he grew up in, he said, I want this. He had a mom that pushed him, didn't have a dad in his life, had a mom that pushed him and pushed him, did very well. He says, when I go back to the old neighborhood, I'm looked at as an Uncle Tom. I'm the guy who caved into the white man. Hmm. It's that mentality that's just a cycle that goes on over and over again. And he said, guys that I knew that ended up, you know, if they didn't die, they got, you know, they spent eight years in prison. They would come back in the neighborhood and they would be, all be celebrated. Hey, man, hmm. you're back out. All this kind of stuff. That is a weird, that's a weird cycle that needs to be broken. Yeah. It's just to sit there and to try to push yourself to be successful isn't a white thing. It's an American hmm. thing. And um, there's plenty of people out there. Uh, you know, Dr. Ben Carson is a dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he says the same thing. I mean, there he's got a school named after him in, in Detroit. And it, for years now, they've been trying to take his name off the school. Mm -hmm. It's just so, it's so, it's so absurd, this cancel culture. And these, to me, are just incredibly disgruntled people that had no success in their life because they didn't try. They may have yeah. had one failure and they gave up. I'm a 13 year old. I'm a 13 year overnight success in Hollywood. I had failure for <laughs> failure for failure. Yes. I just didn't give up. That's yeah. That's a key point. That failure is a necessary ingredient to success sure. for sure. Yep. Okay, I know we're pressed for time here. I do have to ask you about this though. Okay, you and your wife Sam mm -hmm. are, I yep. think, what the internet would call relationship goals. I mean, you guys. Um, I don't know. You just you're you're telling the truth. You're successful at it. Um, you, you just give us a lot to look up to. So do you have any secrets for successful marriage, relationship, partnership? How did you guys build uh, the relationship that you have? You know, we actually met on my TV show, Hercules. I mean, every two weeks, they sent down a pretty girl for me to work with. So it was a great dating service <laughs> for me. But uh, uh, when I met her at the end of season four, it was all over for me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big flirt to begin with. And I hit on her. I worked on her. She's laughing at me. But I wore her down. We've been together 24 years now. I told her after 10 years, that's like a golden anniversary in Hollywood. Because 24 years for most actors, that's 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 like five marriages combined. So it's a matter <laughs> of just keep plugging away and plugging away. So that's my dog barking. And, um, uh, but, uh, to me, it was like, I, I didn't, I, I always tell people, don't let anyone set your limitations, especially yourself. Like I said earlier, people give up way too early. You, you got to keep plugging along because there's going to be a lot of failure in your life, but failure can be a positive thing, but we always work through everything in our relationship. We got three amazing kids. And, uh, for me, I just, I, I went down a road about 12 years ago because Hollywood booted me out because being a conservative in Hollywood is like being a leper. So I just I just decided that uh, um, I want to do movies that have a positive message instead of a negative one. I didn't want to be one of those guys that was following the the, the 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 road that Hollywood's on. That really, unfortunately, Hollywood I think is perpetuating that hate and that anger and the, the, that that divide. And uh, back in the 1950s, Walt Disney said movies and television will influence our youth. Well, you can see how it's influencing. There's no question that has a hand in what's going on out there because it goes right along with the press. I mean, Andrew Breitbart is the one who said it. First time I heard it, maybe even said before, where he said that politics runs downstream from culture and who runs the culture? Hollywood does, along with the mainstream media. So um, we both decided to do things that had, um, you know, a more positive bend. I don't care how much they want to come after us, but I think the reality is a lot of people know it. I get people all the time in movie sets coming up and saying, hey, man, thanks for being a voice for us. And I go, why don't you be a voice for yourself? You know, I said the sheep are going to be the sheep, but we need to wake up the lions. Don't be afraid. Don't let don't let don't apologize when you make a statement that's true and let the woke world attack you. And so you better apologize for saying the truth. No, don't apologize for it, yeah. because I think more and more people are starting to wake up now, because I, I do think we're reaching a tipping point that's going to go in a more positive way instead of a negative way. And we got to keep plugging along. I do I get a plug for SorboStudios.com. Please go to Sorbo studios.com sign up we got a lot of good things happening there um and actually for people that want christmas ideas we got great packages for our books and dvds that people will love that are good family positive family uh, movies and, and books and uh i'm also um let people know out there that my wife and i are hosting a trip to israel in may so go to sorbo israel if you've never been there i highly recommend it it's gonna be an amazing bucket list trip that'll open your eyes so sorbo israel trip.com check it out that's so cool. And then what are just a couple of the projects you're working on now? I noticed you're doing the left, you did the left behind movie, yeah. which I read as a kid, actually. So I'm cool. excited to check that out. Uh, what January, else? Are you on? January 26th, that movie opens on 1100 screens. Uh, it's, uh, you can go, if you go to sorbostudios.com, you'll see more information on it. You can see the trailer for it. It's called Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist. 
-hmm. I directed it. I starred in it. We have a great cast with uh, Corbin Burnson and Bailey Chase and Neil McDonough. And then I've got another movie coming out called Miracle in East Texas, true story, uh, set in 1930. I directed that one as well. And then I got the Reagan movie coming out in March. I starred in that along with Dennis Quaid plays uh, President Reagan. I played his pastor in it. So uh, a lot of good things coming down the pipeline. And my new documentary coming out, uh, dealing with The Last Supper, it's called Eating with the Enemy, which will be out next mm. spring. Awesome. Kevin, thank you so much. Keep uh, mm -hmm. generating this massive truth signal that you're doing on Twitter. People thank love you. it. And uh, I really appreciate it. right? At, at K Sorbs, S O R B S. My buddies all call me Sorbs. So it's at K Sorbs. You need to have Sorbs. my wife on. Have you had my wife on? Yeah, Sam's been on and I've been on her show oh, as cool. well. And That's I really right. appreciate right. Yeah, really appreciate what she's doing in public education because we got to yep. get the state out of the, the kids' heads for sure. Yep. And they can get at sorbostudios.com. Both of our sites are merged together. So um, have a great Thanksgiving. And great yeah. Christmas. Happy and, Thanksgiving. Uh, Appreciate you doing this. Road. I get the Nashville now and then, so maybe I can come in and do a live one with you there. That would be awesome. Look forward cool. to it.